All right, guys, we're going to quickly go over resources. Um, everything in a scene is a node and stuff such as textures, materials, and shaders, and all those such as meshes as well, as well. A mesh instance is a node and a mesh is a resource that goes in the mesh instance, for example. And the tile map, a tile sheet is a resource and the tile map is just the node. We're going to go over ways, ways you could use resources and making custom resources. Okay guys, so here let's start with saving data. So first let's open this up. So this is just a simple scene I made. Save and load and some text edit. So let's save uh, some text here. You could hit save and close this down. Open it up again and hit load and that text pops up. So right off the bat, before you even use this, keep in mind that it's not that secure. And uh, it's recommended that you use JSON and encrypting instead. So, the way we do this is, first we have the save data, that's the save data resource, and then we have the edit text, and we initialize the save data here, we set the default text to text, and then the data, t whenever you want to save now, we hit the save button, we set the data, data's text to be the edit text to text, and we use the save resource to save, pass in the data, and pass in the save path. And that save path needs to be user dash user dash dash us whatever name you want to give it and then you could use res here or you could use t-res but t-res is just a text file and you could just open it and look at it anywhere in your any with any text editor so when you want to load now you get the resource loader then you said if it exists the save path if the save file exists, then you want to load it up and you want to set the text back to the data that text from the text editor. And that's it for that. Remember, this is not secured and you should be fine if you want to do like maybe game jams with it and simple stuff like that. But apart from that, maybe if you want to do a commercial game, just don't use it. Another useful function for resources is uh, code decoupling. This is when you uh, separate your uh, objects dependencies. So for example, then you're in your UI, you'd say something like uh, get tree, get node, get player, get the HP, and then you get the HP and do it there. That's dependent on the player being in the scene. So in this case, uh, you load a resource and you pass it to all of the the scenes that may want to get the data from the resource. So for example, the player sets the data, so he sets his health to 100. The spike now, he also could set the data, but you specifically won't want to do that. You want the spike to reduce the health, so you tell the spike to reduce the health if it hits the player. Then the UI reads the data and then displays it on the text or you know displays it to the player so the way you do that here is let's go on the player first the player received the data and then it sets its health to 100 this is important here and ready because uh, the data doesn't reset with the player unless you do this here obviously and on the spike you set the do a check whenever it's in the area. If it's if it's in the group player, you reduce its help by ten. And in the control, you're just checking its help. If it's or whatever it is, and then print that text out. I mean, here it is. And then if it's less than zero, you reload the current scene. So that's just a check to restart again. One thing to know is whenever you load a resource, where wherever you load it once. It doesn't matter if you load it somewhere else again, like if you do it from code. Uh, it's just going to be a reference to that same exact resource, no matter what point you get a check for it. So one load it first, then every other one gets a reference to whatever it is at that point. Alright, let's do a run here. There you go. have my little character here with the default code from Godot. And then if I walk into the spike, it kills him.
eventually and then bam and it restarts if i take the player out of the scene now for example so if i delete the player out of here and then run the scene again there you go no errors because it doesn't require the player to be in the scene to work which you won't want anyways so just undo this if i can I cannot oh there you go all right our third use for resources is attribute storage so for example we have the same spike here again and we can now set its spike type and that's a resource and that takes both a damage that the amount of damage that it does and an image for it to change its image and let's go in here for example here it is damage and image and then if you want to create that remember you have to extend the class name i mean set the class name to spike resource or whichever and you could just right click create new resource and then search for spike resource oop, oop, oop. spike resource and you could create it and set its data but we're not going to do that i have three of them here already so now we could just drag one in the tiny zone and that does four damage and that's using a small texture so we could drag this small one which is not tiny but Changes texture, does 10 damage now. Then the big spike that does 30 damage and it also changes texture to that large. In the spike class, we're just gonna check if the spike type exists, if there's a resource. Then we set the sprite to these texture to be that image, and then we set this offset to be the spike type image reason size. That's just to make it not just centered and going in the floor it's more upwards uh to be right flat with the floor and then regular stuff here we say spec type and damage so reduce the player hp remember that's the same resource from before with the player and that works just the same here so there's a big spike and it's gonna do 30 damage each time and then boom that's it for that one that's pretty straightforward so Last but not least is extending resources. And this is a bit more advanced, but it still works. So what I'm doing here is could press the enter key and I'm getting random uh, shapes, random um, asteroids. This is a asset from my game that I'm working on. So what I'm doing here is let's go in the world. I have a resource of asteroids and let's go on the actual asteroid library there it is just a bunch of asteroids i created a mesh library so the way you use resources with mesh libraries is you add the script that you want create a script as usual where is it let's find mesh lab here it is asteroid library and i extended the mesh library because that's a resource and then I gave it its class name. This wasn't really necessary, but it's there, just in case. So what I'm doing here is a bunch of stuff. I'm basically, don't have to get into this too much, just just to know that it's there. You, um, I'm getting the item, I'm getting one of the indexes from the asteroids. And I'm basically creating a whole object with a mesh instance 3D and some collision shapes and stuff like that. And that's you know that's all in code you know you could do that here but in this case i have to do it here so what i'm doing is let's go on a mesh library could just look at one of these items for example let's look at zero so zero has this mesh and it has this uh shape there's a shape in here but i guess it can't there's no preview for that that's just the collision shape so i have to create the static mesh and static body and then add that collision shape to it so that's all i'm doing here i uh, could pause and look at it if you want i'm only using this one so these are for what i'm doing in my game so you don't have to worry about that just as an example so what i'm doing is on the asteroid asset let's go back on it remember i'm adding this asteroid library object to it uh script i mean so could they 
new script or you know any script you want then in my world class and the process i'm checking if i just press the x the enter key then i say do i check if there's a mesh there already and then delete it just to clear it clear the last thing that i added then i say add new asteroid and that's this function here say item amount astrolib asteroid list of size so i'm just getting the size of this um the size of the um the amount of stuff in that asteroid library and then i use rand i the amount so it give me between zero and the amount that's there and it returns that child and i add it as a child of the world and that's pretty much it so uh leave some comments in the comments <laughs> so i could answer anything you guys want and uh like and subscribe and have a good one guys take care